Now, this is New, New Caledonia, but keep in mind, y'all, she used to behave no good. Okay, so today I'm going to read from Corinthians, chapter 4, Laboring for God. Let a man so account us as the ministry of Christ and the stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But for me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or a man to judge of yea, I judge not mine own self. For I know nothing myself, yet I am hereby justified, but he who judges me is the Lord. Now, Jesus Amen. 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 Good morning, Frank. Good morning. Good morning. Let us all stand. And Reverend Smith will come and pray over us on this morning. So let us make it easy on him and let us go before God with thanksgiving and with praise in our hearts. Whatever you have been of, now is the time to let God know what you need. Now is the time to let your voice be heard because God is willing, he is able, and he is ready. But don't think he's just going to do it just because you need it. Come on, say that. Sometimes you have to open up your mouth and ask. The old saying goes, a closed mouth will never get fed. I see we have a lot of hungry people in the church today. A closed mouth will never get fed. Amen.
standing on this rock, Father God. We just pray, Father God, that you can continue to draw people, Father God, into this house, Father God. As the man of God, Father God, that we continue to follow him, Father God, that he follows him, Lord. We ask the presence of prayer right now. Hallelujah. And I thank God for his grace and his mercy. 
So we might as well go ahead and practice. Okay, y'all help us say that. Don't y'all say nothing. I want y'all to say it. Here we go.
is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the sweetest name that I know. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. There's power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
the story, but all of us are already indoctrinated into the story. So I think there's something that's going to talk about because we know the reason why he wrote it. You know, the donkey he had the mom with him because he didn't want the little donkey to get scared. So, and then he wrote it and he let the, let the people praise him as king and, and all of that just to prove a point to them that I told you I'm going to die. And they believe it. That's your song. That's your, that's your, that's your song. But we're going to talk about the subjects. They touch or the touch of God. The touch of God. And as we look at first time, you see that the people had began to ask Samuel for a king. Like the people of the land. We'll stop there and say, isn't that amazing? We are never satisfied with what God gives us. We, want. we always want what somebody else has. You don't know what they had to go through. Can you get away with this right? And so, here, God, Samuel's having a conversation with God about the request of the people of God. Samuel tells God, God, they want a king. God says to Samuel, Samuel, slow your road. They, they not rejecting you. They rejected me. Now, now Samuel give them what they want. Isn't that, isn't that like our God? Give yeah, them what we want. But we didn't understand what, kept, what, what, what was coming with what we want. He said, I want you to uh, Take your daughters and sons, and they're going to make service. Come on. They're going to put you out in the field and in the armies, and they're going to do all these things that I was not doing to you. But since you want more, let me give you. Come on. And so, Saul's father's donkeys got lost. Hmm. And so, Saul and one of his servants went to look for the donkeys. In the process of looking, they couldn't find the one long for them. Then all of a sudden, Saul said, let's go back before my dad starts to look for me. And the servant said, well, there is a seer over in the town. And we ought to go ask the seer if he can tell us where to go. So see, back then, they were called seers. Come on. Because they could see stuff. Yes. The day they call prophets and prophetess and soothsayers and you name. Yeah, yeah. Back then they were seers. Take away the R C. That means Disha. That means they could see what was in front. So God had already told Samuel that the boy was coming. <laughs> told him what to do, how to get there, and what to see. So Look at this. Saul said, we cannot go to the man of God in hand. I could say something right there. And I am. It's a sad indictment when you come to church in the hand. In the hand. And Saul said, I have none. We've eaten all of our food. And the man said, I got some silver. Let's go. When he got there, Saul and Samuel sat down and had a meal. And in the process of this meal, Samuel began to tell Saul what God had said. Mm -hmm. And then after that, he said, stay with me and I'll finish telling you. Then when he finished verse 26, the Bible says, and there went with him a band of men whose hearts God touched. And see, my brother and sister, when God has a call on your life, God knows how to touch you like nobody else. Uh, let's just be real about it. He can touch you with affliction to get your attention to do what he called you to do. You don't believe it? We have several 
patterns in the Bible that had to go through stuff in order to do what God required of them. So my brothers and sisters, we look at the touch of God. We see, number one, that God's touch, it transforms. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, if any man be in Christ, that's good women to y'all, he is a new creation. The touch of God brings forgiveness of sin. Those who repent and believe. Uh, they don't bring no forgiveness if there's no repenting and believing. Amen. It brings cleansing with power. Yes. Those who yield themselves totally to God. If you don't believe his power, he said that if we sin, we are confess our sins to him who is just. Come on. Yes, Thank to forgive you. us and to yes. cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Transforming touch of God makes everything new. I don't know about y'all. I, I remember the life I used to live. But when I met Jesus on that road to the master, oh, uh, my life changed for the better. Did your life change? If it did, y'all just raise your hands. The transform. Transforming touch of God makes everything new. We receive a new life in Christ. Well, what do you mean? Well, you know how you smoke? Everybody. Yeah. I used to drink everybody. But when I met Jesus, come on. That's what I don't understand by some folk. They said, Jesus is my Lord, but you still doing what you're doing yesterday. So who is really your Lord? Now, I'm going to put this one in there. Uh, this is going to be a good sermon for y'all. Uh, y'all need to come back here. this. I'm going to talk about isn't it good that you don't have to go to the lips on Sundays no more. Yeah. You can come to the house of God and get a spirit that will make you. Come on, come on. <laughs> we receive new life in Christ. We receive new desire and activity. We receive a new hope of eternal life. For me, I never thought about no eternal life. You did, you did. I, I, I didn't ever think about a life after this. But boy, I'm glad that God touched me. God, if He hadn't touched me, I wouldn't have been transformed. What about you? Not only does God's touch transform, it also adapts. Yes. And I've been saying this for years, and I'm going to say it again. The Bible says in John chapter 15, verse 16, he says, I have ordained you yeah, yeah, yeah. that ye should go and bring forth food. Yeah. I do not, and I will say this again, I say it with all authority, need no man to ordain me to do nothing. Come on, come on. Because if man ordain you, man can take your ordination. That's it. But when God ordains you, it's up to you. You are going to die in that position whether you forget it or not. And many, many believers fail because they do not work for God. Yeah. Some think only ministers are to witness to the unsaved and win them to Christ. How many times have I heard you the pastor? You, you, you. It's your job now, baby. It's your job. My job is to make this simple. Yes, sir. Teach you to go teach somebody else. In other words, let's keep it simple as they say in recovery. Let's keep it simple, stupid. Ah. Uh, But we're going to keep it simple. In other words, he said, I'm going to teach you how to fish. And it's your responsibility to go and fish. It's not the preacher's job. It's not the pastor's job to continue to go out and be the one that's doing all the witnessing. Because the church of God ordains all of us into God's service. 
all of us. I'm, I'm, here I am. I'm just a school teacher. You come to class on Sunday mornings and you leave for service Sunday. And you are to go and share your faith with other people who may not believe, who have that sin, who are just traveling the fence. Your job is to go and share with them the touch of God. Church of God. Every one of us can share something. We can share a smile. And you know, I, I don't understand my brothers and sisters. Y'all mind taking the time with this. I'll be, I'll be going to step. Uh, what I don't understand is why is it so hard to smile if you say it? See, 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 I'm going to smile. When I was out in the world, I smiled, baby. Right? Since I've been in the Lord, I smile even more. Amen. You know why? Because I know I should have been dead. Come on. Sleeping in my grave. But instead, the Lord allowed me to leave. Amen. So why can't we share something with God? A smile, a prayer. Will you pray for me? I will. Go back tomorrow. Since you prayed for me yesterday, child, I forgot. <laughs> See, a true believer will pray right now. They won't tell you to wait till later on. Because later on may not be promised to you. And that prayer may have or may could have told the death angel, move on down to this yeah, yeah. Can you hear what say? Amen. Why can't we give a helping hand? Our brother, sister, son, so God. But we call ourselves believers. Why should I say Christians? But we don't act like Christians. Not only does the word of God touch, transforms, ordains, it unifies. I am a firm believer in love and unity. I know without either one of them, we're not going anywhere. Amen. And I'm so glad that somebody, because I always would say, I, I, I. Mm -hmm. And one day somebody said to me, well, maybe you said we, Pastor, we can get somewhere. And I would say, we all are the same. Mm -hmm. I'm tell you what else. Don't get mad when I say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Mm -hmm. It's a Pastor ain't supposed to be sinning. The Bible says we all have. The church of God unifies. The Bible says in Psalms 30, 133 and 1, Behold how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll that, 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 be here for our three o'clock full sun program uh, <laughs> coming up. Uh, that, that's our brotherhood uh, program. Three o'clock full sun. Amen. And that's the thing. How do you? But for some reason or another, brother and ain't living together, working together, operating together. Again, we question savage. Can you get away with this? Amen. It unifies. And many of us, many churches, fail because our members do not work together. They are divided. Jesus. Some pull in one direction and others another direction. And I said before, y'all, we are united. We are one because the one body is what Christ is looking for. Amen. He's not looking for you as an individual. Come on. Someone got mad because he said Christ would care less about you that is like a man on the back of the bull. <laughs> they got mad. I said, well, it is true. He only cares about you when you are lost. But once you come in, he don't have to care because he knows you in. And when you come in, you become part of the body. Amen. This is not an individual about. This is a body. And what is Christ coming back for? The body. Amen. 
Church of God brings harmony and love. It enables us to accomplish God's work in the unity of the Spirit. Paul said in Ephesians 4 that we are to build up and to edify the body. And see, this is what your heart's desire will be when you allow God in your heart. Amen. You made a witness there? Amen. So that we can accomplish it in the unity of the Spirit. We have to be in the Spirit Church. And I'm not talking about that other Spirit. And let me give y'all another uh, spirit. I ain't talking about a wild turkey. You know, it's sad y'all go by six spirits. But you won't give to the spirit. Come on now, come on. Say that. That's another part of that. Not only as the word of God uh, unified, it also comforts. The Bible said we are more than comforts. The Bible says. And somebody says to me, I understand what you said, Pastor, but I ain't with that right now. And I said to them that if you're not with it right now, don't worry about it later on. <laughs> because when later on comes, you wasn't with it right now. You can rest assured when later on comes, you remember that. You denied me. You denied to follow my instructions. And many believers, my brothers and sisters, they give up easy. You know, I was talking about fishing and how we go fishing. And I heard Brother Greg and the bass and crop in. Some other fishing are hard to catch. You just can't put any kind of bait out there. But they told me a catfish is the easiest fish to catch. Here he is. It sounds like some of y'all. But the problem is, We'll catch that joker. And before we clean him, we already try to eat him. In other words, what I'm saying, you give up too easy when you're supposed to be doing God's work. You throw up your hand and quit when they are persecuted. Oh, when then somebody start talking about it and lying on them, tell the truth, because some of that stuff don't be the lie. Mm -hmm. And don't me too. <laughs> Uh, we get mad. We get upset. Why not pray for him? And ask God to give you your sin. Hello, somebody. Because yeah, we are more than comfort. Yes. Uh, when we are persecuted, rebuked, or when we fail to get our own way, we want to give up. I come to let us know it's not our way, it's God's way. Because our way is what got us in the shape that we need. I look back over my life. I look back over my life. I look back over my life. And uh, I look back over my life. And I think about it. Where I was and where I am. Hallelujah. Because where I was, trying to have and do it my own way, I was studying falling short. Touch a God gives us care to come. What do you mean, preacher? See, I always, I wasn't always able to just stand here and run my mouth. I had what they call inferiority. Because everybody around me had those degrees. And couldn't preach their way out of a brown paper bag. But I felt kind of bad while I was there, Brother Henry, because I didn't have a degree. And then the scripture came back when I went and got in Chris way over there and knocked out to go and learn the Bible more than I already knew it. I went over there and then God, then God said to me, did I ordain you? 
Yes, you did. So why are you giving them all that money and learn what you already know? I said, you show sure like. Let me get my grip in here. And I left it. I hang out with professors. Degree folk. But sometimes we get in a conversation, they try to tell me something. I look and I say, wait a minute. The text does not suggest that. You told me to listen to the language. Well, the language here said that the touch of God gives us carry to conquer. Christ finishes the strength which enables, watch this here now, Christ punishes the strength which enables us to keep on keeping on. Amen. You do know the Bible says I can do all things. Oh, yeah. Y'all yeah. 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 have a preacher try to go somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Help a preacher a little bit. Yeah. Yes. And not only are uh, we conquerors, the touch of God gives, he is healed. And, and one of the things that I, I've been writing in my mind is New Caledonia Baptist Church of family. Healing the community. Amen. Because the community is sick. Amen. If you don't believe it, just look back in your own house. And I'm not talking about the one you live in. I'm talking about them that you was born with and around. See how it's all messed up. But when we're in Jesus, healing comes. What do you mean by that preacher? Well, when I'm in Jesus, I find no fault in nobody else. Because I realize that it was the blood. Somebody say it was the blood. So, Matthew chapter 8 and 3 states, and Jesus put forth his hand and touched him. Can you hear witness that? Many have never experienced divine healing before. And the reason they haven't uh, felt divine healing is because of their lack of faith. Can I testify, Lord? Yes, you can. I remember the first time they said that you have a tumor on your lip. I was bold, I, I was arrogant, and I was self-centered. Don't care what it is, just get it out. But the second time around, they came and said, well, now you have love. Yeah. 
from his heart. He's giving you what God has given to him. The door is open. Glory, hallelujah. Because it had not been for what Christ did on Calvary. Glory, hallelujah. Please come. Out there in Facebook, man, if you don't know God, it's your, Jesus is your personal Savior. Now is the time. Tomorrow is not promised to us. Yesterday is gone. Today, right now, is all that we have. Come. If you just need prayer, I know I do. I can always stand in the need of prayer. Come. Second, Lord, come.
have right now for our soul. God, you know what our request is and what the doctors have seen. God, I'm a living witness. I've seen you do it over and over again. I've seen you heal sickness and disease. I've seen you heal and set the captive free. I've seen you, God, drive cancer out. And God, replace it with your spirit. So right now, God, we attack that demon of cancer. We bind it in the name of Jesus right now. Believe in God. Touch it and agree in my faith uh, that she shall be healed. No matter what the, the doctor has said, we know, God, that you have the final say. You've done it several times in my life. You've done it several times in the lives of others. Father, let her faith increase so in God she can feel the anointing of your Holy Ghost power as it runs all down to her body. Let her feel that fire that begins to cut away at that demonic spirit called cancer. God, we ask it now. Do it. Do it right now. In the name of Jesus, we need prayer to leave it done right now. And it is so. In the name of Jesus Christ.